So I just made kind of a mini project to try out Elasticsearch. It's been something I've been wanting to play with for a while now, and I wanted to build a search where as you type, you see the results. So that's what I have here, and let's try it out. And what I am actually searching here is I went ahead and took just all my YouTube videos and I'm searching the titles of them. And so here I can see some of my GraphQL videos and I can click on them and it'll actually take me to YouTube. So I'm gonna talk about how I built this and also I deployed it, it's on my website right now. So if you want to, you can check it out. Um, what I used to deploy this and I tried some new technologies that I'm gonna talk about how I liked them. So to start off with, I built this using Elasticsearch, at least the back end where I'm querying and how I'm getting the results. Now, when I was looking for how people built autocompletes with Elasticsearch, a lot of people use this completion suggester module. And so that's what it's built with. But I actually came, I tried it and that's what I'm using right now. And it's has some shortcomings that I noticed with my own search. And the first disappointment is I can't search um, or sort my search. So when I type GraphQL, I kind of would like to see maybe my most recent videos or my oldest videos or sort it by view count, but there's no way to just sort it based on Elasticsearch, at least when I do that query through the completion suggester. Now what I can do is search, get the results for the search and then sort it in the application, but it's kind of weird. I would have thought I'd be able to search it uh, in Elasticsearch. The other thing is, and this could be also because I'm new to Elasticsearch and I don't know all the ins and outs of it. Uh, notice my query here is GraphQL. So let's say I want to get all the ones that have Apollo and GraphQL in them. Well, I can search Apollo and GraphQL and you'll notice that it gets no results. And the reason for that is it needs to be right next to each other. So when I have Apollo and GraphQL, you can see Apollo and GraphQL is right next to each other. But if I get rid of the word and, uh, there's now a word between them, and so it doesn't get that whole part. And I, I also had to kind of hack it to be able to uh, even get. So notice React is the last word in this title. So uh, the default way of how it works is it only looks for words at the beginning and kind of fills as you type. Um, so I had to get it so I, you can kind of break up the string. And so I split it so it would also uh, store the last word and kind of the words in the middle. That way you can search any word in the sentence. Um, but yeah, it was kind of a bummer. And I also wanted to kind of just like be able to search two topics together, Airbnb and React and get stuff. But I need to have them right next to each other, which is kind of a bummer. Um, and so I really like the search that Agolia has. Um, so I was trying to emulate and trying to see if I could build something similar to that. And I'm thinking that completion suggester is not what I should be using to build that sort of thing. Um, the nice thing about it though, that's something I forgot to mention, is it does do fuzzy fuzzy uh, search by default. So that's pretty nice. So here's React. Um, if I misspell it, it's still gonna pull up React things. Um, and again, I'm not really sorting it, so we're gonna see random results each time. And I'm not sure exactly what the order they're gonna be in. But it pulls up React stuff because it's one off. Um, or I guess it could be doing recommended in this particular query, but we can see React there. So I did like that, um, but I guess I'm thinking I may need to look into like the full text search that Elastic has or some of the other search features, and I may be able to get a better search um, that does more of the things that I'm looking for, sorting and being able to kind of just put two words together and grab them from anywhere in the title um, is kind of what I want. And I guess the completion suggestion is very good. It says it's optimized for speed. That was another thing that I liked when I was reading through how it worked. So maybe it's gonna be slower if I switch over to those other methods. Um, but let me know if any suggestions on the Elasticsearch bit. And if you have any suggestions to get closer, cause I'm really curious how Agolia builds their search and what they use for it. Cause I, I, I really like whenever I'm searching anything with Agolia, it's really nice to use. Um, either Elasticsearch or if there's a better tool to build something like this than Elasticsearch, I'd love to know. Um, so let's talk about how we deployed this. So I'm using Elasticsearch. What am I using for the website here? So I'm using React to build this and this little component right here, uh, I styled it a little bit, but it is using uh, Downshift. Let's see if I have any Downshift videos. Uh, it looks like I have two Downshift videos. 
So I'm using a library uh, by PayPal. Uh, Kent Dodds made this, it's pretty nice. So that's what I'm using to, as I type, I get this little menu bar that comes up here and I can get the results uh, that way. So that's what I'm using for that. And then I tried out Next.js for this. So this is actually server-side rendering and that actually went pretty well. I'm using TypeScript for it and uh, it, it worked nicely like with TypeScript and everything. It was a little weird setting up Apollo at first because um, there's a little extra stuff that you have to do, but other than that, it worked out pretty well. And I forgot to mention, but all the code I have on GitHub, if you want to check any of this out, I have both the server and the website. And the server is pretty simple. I have a TypeScript server here uh, with GraphQL, and uh, we can look at the source code here. It's just a single, basically just a single file here where I'm using Apollo Server Express, uh, and I have a single typed F here, uh, and I'm just querying on the search and it returns some videos. And then I'm also serving the images from my server. And I just did that because I didn't want to spam YouTube server when I'm doing searches. I'd rather, rather just spam my servers, um, at least when I was testing it and stuff. And then I also wanted to, everything's deployed on the single URL here. So I also have my server running at uh, server.benawad.com. And you can see I can't get anything here. But if I go to slash GraphQL, I can go to the GraphQL playground. And this is where my server is running and I can run queries. Now I don't have introspection on in production, so we can't actually see the schema here, but you'd be able to type stuff if you wanted to. Um, so that's that. And then uh, to deploy all this, I used Docker and I used Docker Compose. So here's my Compose file. So I spin up an Elasticsearch instance and I had to kind of uh, get rid of the, or reduce the amount of memory that Java was using because I deployed this to DigitalOcean and I'm using the cheapest bucket. So all this stuff is on a $5 instance. Uh, so Elasticsearch was using way too much memory at first. So I had to turn that on. So it's using less, um, but I have Elasticsearch that starts up my server, my website. And then here are two new things that I tried out as well. Uh, something called Caddy. So I, I had been trying Nginx and something called traffic before for my reverse proxies and for load balancing before. And some of you guys suggested I try out Caddy, so I figured why not, let's try it out this time. And I actually really liked it. So that's this thing over here. And so Caddy sits in front of uh, my instance here and it takes me to my website when I go to Binawad. It takes me to my server when I say server.binawad.com and I can serve it from different domains or subdomains using Caddy. And as you can see, I'm using HTTPS and that was really easy to set up. Um, and I basically HTTPS was easier to set up than Nginx. And then the uh, config file for Caddy made a lot more sense to me than traffics. Uh, and it, it's pretty simple. You can see it right here. And here are my different domains that I'm all serving up here. Um, and then the last bit, so if I was doing a new project, I would actually probably choose Caddy for my reverse proxy next time. I really enjoyed that. Um, and then the last bit here is go access. So this is something for logging. And I actually uh, just have it opened up so you can come check it out if you wanna look at what this looks like too. So this logs all the requests that the server gets. Um, well, it doesn't log it, uh, Caddy logs it, but this actually visualizes it, if you will, and looks at the logs. And again, I can access it by going to goaccess.binawad.com. And the reason I'm able to do this is because Caddy is acting as a, a proxy and serving me to this page. Um, and I can see all the requests that I get and whatnot and some data. I haven't actually looked too in detail about what all it gives me, um, but uh, it's open. You can come check it out if you want to see it. Uh, and it looks pretty cool. Uh, I like the dark theme of it. Uh, so this is another option that I may use for future projects. I haven't decided if I like it or not or if I find any use in it. It's more of something for REST projects because GraphQL, you can't really see all the routes that it hits. Uh, but I only have really one route here, just search. So I figured I might as well try it out. But anyway, that is the project. That's how I deployed it. Uh, all the code again is on GitHub if you want to check it out. Um, or if you want to check out the website, you can. I'll probably, I'm not sure how long I'm going to keep this up for. I think I'm going to actually build a real website for myself at some point. Um, but I'm going to leave my search up for a little bit now so you can come try it out. And uh, I'm going to be trying out some more stuff with Elasticsearch because I do like it still. It was pretty easy to learn as well. Um, and that's it for this video.